and ritual to everybody else. <laughs> so this is uh, the second in a four part series about different kinds of rituals because different types of rituals require different kinds of uh, settings, different materials, different mindset, etc. So this part two is about creating personal rituals. So these are be rituals that are just you, yourself, and you. Nobody else will be there. This is all about you. Um, Go. Come on. I'm trying to figure out how to make it go. Doesn't want to go. Oh, here we go. Up oh, there. Uh, uh, how do I get back? Ah, here we go. Oop. Ah. Oop. Sorry. I guess I was going the wrong way. Oh no. I made a mess. Sorry. <laughs> oh no. I shut it all together. Here we go. I made a mess of that one. Hold on a moment, folks. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Here we go from the beginning. Let's start that again. Here we go. You can see it scroll. All right, here we go. All right. So what, what do I mean by personal rituals? We all have personal rituals that we do every day, right? We, that are kind of more mundane, but I would, I would argue that they're about mindfulness if we're smart enough to put some energy into it. But if you think about, you know, like every morning I ha I feed my cats at a certain time. Every morning I make myself a cup of coffee. I have a half a bagel with cream cheese and my vitamins and supplements so that I don't kill people. So, but I, I try to imbue those things with a degree of mindfulness to make them more than mundane. So those are small daily rituals, but this also personal rituals include um, attuning yourself to the rhythms of nature, honoring, honoring and celebrating personal life passages, um, personal healing and development, self-care, personal cleansing, meditation and deepening our relationships with the our, our deities, our gods and goddesses, or whatever spirits that we work with. I work with fairies and our ancestors. Um, and there's many other reasons to do personal rituals, but those are probably some of them, the main ones. Um, <clears throat> and Selena Fox in her wonderful wisdom tells us that ritual practices affect personal and environmental change, particularly changes in consciousness. And really 95% of a personal ritual is all about changing our personal perceptions and the way we interact and experience things. And I can tell you, I can be a little cranky sometimes. <laughs> and I know that sometimes when I act cranky, I am the one that suffers more. So being more conscious about how I perceive things, I can turn my, turn that into a little ritual to help myself not be a cranky old lady. But you, I think you get the idea that whole, like changing your perception changes how you think about things and therefore how you experience them. So that's always something to keep in mind when you're doing personal rituals. Um, uh, can I just interject for a second? Sure. Um, I'm, ta I'm taking notes now. Is there's going something... to be a handout so you don't have to take two intense notes. Oh, okay. I, I, then I won't even continue. <laughs> just so you can take, I like to have a handout so everybody can just like really take in what, what I'm saying. It'll be all the things that are on these, on the slides on this PowerPoint will be on the handout. Oh, that's, that's great. Thank you so much. Resources at the end. So I already said, you know, these are the sort of personal rituals um, that you might do. And there's other ones, I'm sure, you know, the universe is infinite. And so there are certainly infinite reasons and needs for doing personal rituals. But for me, uh, communing with the divine privately and having a relationship with, with the gods and goddesses that I honor, my ancestors and other spirits and things like that that I work with um, 
personal development, which I would include things like self-love, healing, personal, doing rituals for personal strength, for development, like regularly meditating or doing yoga or journaling or gardening. Those are all rituals. I, I'm also a landscaper by trade and I teach a class called Weedology. And at the very end of the course, I tell people that they should think about weeding differently, make it a mindful practice that helps them. So, so is this with personal rituals that you really should take the time, make them as personal as possible. They should, it doesn't make any difference what other people say when it comes to personal rituals. It's all about what is right for you. I'm sure some purists of different traditions might argue with me, but I think when it comes to personal rituals, if they're not about what you need and what you want, then they're not going to be effective. It's a pointless waste of sage, you know, and, and good incense and candles if you're not really going to do it in a way that is meaningful for you. Just because it's meaningful, say, for me, does not mean that it's meaningful for everybody else. There, that's the reason that we have all kinds of cool friends on all different kinds of people is because there's different ways to do everything. So I've never been, like I said earlier, learn the rules to everything, be respectful. But I think learning all the rules is all about breaking them too, because you understand like the weaknesses and strengths of all those rules. So that, that goes for, especially if you're eclectic, it's very easy to borrow from other traditions, right? Um, and sometimes we might we need we need to be very very respectful and conscious when we do those kinds of things that we don't um you know step on other people's toes for sure i'm not saying make it personal and make yourself happy to the exclusion of taking advantage of other people or other cultures or traditions um but on the other hand i'm saying if you don't like green don't get a green candle <laughs> There's other colors that you can get, even if it's a prosperity smell spell, you know. Um, I had a question. Uh, you were sure. mentioning about you were talking to some people about a course you were teaching. What was yeah. the course again? Um, I, I'm a landscaper by trade, and I also educate people on environmental issues, especially urban environmental issues and recreating Herbs. habitats in their own yards. Um, and okay. it's, it's a weeding class. So I talk about the practical things about weeding and history, but also that psychological part of it, that spiritual part of it, that thing, if you're in your garden connecting, and I encourage you guys to do this too. There's, I, I have here cleansing. I feel like gardening is like a cleansing of the soul. Um, especially if you have a house full of people and you need to get away and have your own moments take your cup of coffee or tea in the morning or a glass of wine or whatever, or glass of water, or whatever, go out there. You don't have to get all crazy sweaty and go nuts, but you can spend some time observing what you have, noting if there's any issues and maybe coming up with some good solutions. So you can apply that to gardening or you can apply that to your life. You can apply that to how you treat yourself and it becomes a personal ritual of self love and healing. Um, and also personal strength. If you get in touch with yourself in whatever way you choose, I'm just gardening as one option, you know, you can do all kinds of different things. Um, but those kinds of things, and this is what personal ritual is all about is about enriching yourself and making yourself a stronger, happier person so that you can deal with the outside world in a, a way that is more functional or useful and doesn't, you know, um, maybe uh, overwhelm you. Because I know I get overwhelmed a lot, but my, my private moments of self personal ritual, which are things like doing meditation, I, I do the gardening thing because that's what I do. Um, there's something really cool called forest bathing. I have that on up here on the screen and that's a Japanese, uh, art where you actually mindfully walk in the forest to get rid of like all the stuff that's stressing you out and it allows you to connect with nature 
and it, it is very basically it's an auric cleansing <laughs> of sorts I, I see it as like all the trees and leaves and the spirits as you walk by all you all the crap gets stuck and you get walk out of the forest and it's left behind and you don't you can you know proceed not that in our you know our crazy world we don't get muddied up pretty quickly and maybe have to go for a forest bathe you know bath more frequently <laughs> but at least it's there right but also doing things other different kinds of cleansings you can cleanse with sage um you can take a ritual bath um the ocean rivers lakes those are all wonderful natural places also to cleanse yourself quite literally and also psychically um the other thing that you can do that's very personal is making offerings um to um for me it would be to the fairies and i have there's quite a few gods and goddesses that i work with and if i work with them for a particular reason i will make offerings to them my teacher always taught me that you don't get anything for nothing you there's always has to be an exchange of energy of some sort whether it's a dollar bill or it's time or effort or whatever it happens to be but you always have to exchange energy or there's an imbalance all right so let's go to the next one so so how and when would you do per personal rituals? Um, so I think the biggest thing, as with any ritual, um, is what are you, why are you doing it? And it's okay for it to just be, I'm just relaxing and there's not a lot of planning to go into that or whatever. Um, but if you're doing anything more elaborate, if you have some really deep purpose, then planning it ahead of time helps to make the ritual a little bit more effective because it's more focused. And also if you plan it and you have all your props together and you're all ready to rock and roll, then you don't waste your time while you're actually doing the ritual, trying to find all your supplies. <laughs> like as with any, any ritual, personal rituals are no different in their planning stage for sure um and then the other thing and for me i think that for personal rituals timing is actually more important than for all the other kind of rituals that we do because they because they are so specifically about you it's not like where you go to a uh summer solstice ritual it's about everybody it's about the summer solstice it's not going to be it's going to be a lot more general it's going to be about the season but you can take that season and make it personal for you, right? So I'm an autumn baby, I'm a September Virgo girl. So for me, Maybon is probably my favorite ritual and it has a lot of meaning because I was born then, right? But also um, uh, if you're into numerology or astrology, um, there's tons of other personal of, of timing that you can you can consider the hour, the day, the month, the year, what the moon's phase is, where the sun or any other planets are in their cycles, or if they're lining up together, depending on what kind of magic you're trying to do. Um, also, there's things like personal timing, so important life passages, birthdays, anniversaries, you know, important kinds of things like that. Um, and also, uh, you can think about things like feast days for your for the deities or the spirits that you work with. Um, I work with Yamaya a lot. So for me, I am very conscious of her feast days. And I'm always making sure that because I work with her on a regular basis all year round, that I honor her on her special day, just as I get presents on my birthday. So there's and I'm sure you can come up with other timing type things. But like I said, it's I, I feel like for personal things, timing should be more considered than for perhaps some of the other ones. And as I said, I'm not a purist. There are some purists that would be like, you must do it on a Monday at one o'clock in the afternoon when the moon is, you know, in Sagittarius or, you know, whatever. But like, 
I have to live my life. So <laughs> unless there's a really, really good reason to do maybe exactly, exactly, then we sometimes don't do that. Like, like for instance, we have a full moon drumming tomorrow, right? When was the full moon? When was the full moon? Two days ago? <laughs> Yes, the full moon was on <laughs> Wednesday, um, but starting this August full moon, we're going to do a full moon drumming on the full moon. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I wasn't really picking on you, but I was just making a note that it's easier to meet on the Friday because of the circumstances. And it's not that big a deal this time, but it is something that, you know, sometimes we consider. I know that we as Cups has always done big rituals, the Saturday closest. You know, all our our quarters and cross quarters are all like the Saturday closest because it's easier to get everybody to come out on Saturday for whatever ritual. Me too, right? I don't work on Saturdays. Well, I try not to anyway. <coughs> all right. Oh, what did I do? Did I do that? Oh, here. So I love this picture of the bath. I found this online. If you have a, if you had a fantastically large bathtub, you could do this lovely, you can see she's got her tarot cards there or some kind of divination cards. There's crystals and there's petals from flowers and incense and candles of all different kinds. And it gives like that, uh, it is very important for us to have all those, like all those accoutrements, all that staging, the dressing, whatever, that all adds to our ability to like take in what the ritual is about. So you always want that to kind of reflect what you're kind of do. If it's a darker ritual, maybe this is not the exact setup you might want. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're, if you're doing a ritual to get rid of something or whatever, maybe you'd have some black candles and maybe not so many rose petals. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And maybe not even a bath. Perhaps you're just sitting on the floor in front of your altar instead. Like, so where do you have uh, personal rituals? I think the biggest thing regarding personal rituals is having the privacy so you're not interrupted by other people. Um, I know when I was a young, when I was a mom, a single mom, that it was really hard to try to figure out times when my son would not come, you know, banging on the door or bursting in the room. I always ended up doing them after he went to bed. So for me, timing was more about, I couldn't do it until after he went to bed. <laughs> um, but, you know, having, having uh, the privacy to do your ritual freely and not be interrupted by outside can be very important when you're doing something alone because you're really focusing on what you're trying to do. So that can be very distracting. It's, if you already have other people around, maybe you can like uh, manage that focus a little more. But if you're all by yourself, it can be very distracting to have someone. Um, certainly you can do rituals wherever you want, inside, outside, in public places. Like I do a lot of stuff in the woods and technically I think that's a public place Excuse me. or private in your own home or yard. Um, Having a place inside and or outside your home, such as an altar, I have, I have one or two <laughs> um, that are, you know, that you can use, can help magnify uh, your experience and magnify the energy that you're using um, for whatever the purpose of your ritual is. I mean, depending on what your ritual is, you might use one goddess or god as opposed to another. Um, and, um, also of course, when you have a place that's used specifically for personal rituals, every time you do ritual, you have more energy settling into that place. That's you. So when you go into that place, it's easier to get to that space of I'm in that, you know, that zone where I can focus on what I'm trying to do and actually do that meditation or do those prayers or whatever it is you're trying to do because you automatically get to that place because you set it up that way. Um, so being able to, you know, 
have something specific can be very useful. It's not necessary, but it definitely can help uh, amplify or magnify whatever kind of personal magic you're trying to do. Um, so um, last, the last session I did, I kind of went over the elements of ritual and they're, you know, very much the same, but on a, they're just a different focus or a different um, um, purpose or intent behind it. So as I mentioned earlier, I think really the most probably with any ritual, this is not, nothing new. The most important thing is your intent or your stated purpose. What, what are you doing it for? If, it's, if you don't do that, then it's just going to be a wishy-washy, you know, whatever. If you're trying to actually accomplish something, that's not very useful. If you're just doing it, if you're just having a ritual to like honor gods and goddesses, perhaps you don't need to be as focused, but if you're doing it for say personal strength or personal cleansing or something like a little bit more deep and personal, then um, having that intent and that purpose focused, you know, write it down so that you know what you're doing is is very very important because there's nothing else there to distract you know that's gonna like distract it's you yourself and you and nobody else so if you go off and get distracted by something you're just wasting your time and not getting what you need to get done done um this is also a, a really good opportunity to personalize everything about the ritual like what are you trying to achieve are you trying to achieve love? Are you trying to get a new job? Are you trying to, whatever you're trying to do, right? Personalize it with the gods and goddesses you work with. Do some research on colors, do research on crystals, do research on incense, do things that, that, will, that will continue to focus what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to do maybe a personal cleansing so that you can move on and get out of a relationship and you need to like, you know, get rid of old baggage or holding on to yourself, you know, you're gonna wanna use sage. You're gonna you wanna use a black candle. You know, you might wanna be using um, um, crystals that are specific to that purpose. Other things that are specific to that purpose. So that helps that ritual be much stronger. I mean, just so much so much stronger. Um, having said that, if you're not doing anything really, really, really serious, you can be less rigid, especially if you're doing something like um, honoring the gods or just kind of hanging out with your spirit, you know, guides or, you know, something like that. If you're just trying to keep your relationships with them fresh and strong, because you don't like, if you had a friend that only called you when they were in trouble, you'd be like, what the hell? You don't ever call me when you want to go out for a cup of coffee. <laughs> you only call me when you want me to do something for you. So this can be an opportunity to build an actual relationship with whatever deities that you work with um, and creating a, an altar for them, especially one that you can either sit in front of or lay in front of or like somehow gaze upon, if you will. Um, it just, it kind of in, in enhances that relationship and whatever that deity can give to you will be more like a gift as opposed to like something that you're, you know, trying to get out of them. I, I never understand there's, um, uh, in some of the Santeria and other traditions um, of the Yoruban traditions, um, there's a couple of, like there's a Yamaya statue and it's a Virgin Mary statue and she has hands that you can take off. And so some people will take her hands and hide them from her until she gives them what they want. And I'm like, if someone did that to me, I would be like, get the heck out of here. I ain't giving you nothing. <laughs> I always thought that was so crazy. <laughs> but I think that's because my teacher always said, you don't get something for nothing. You always, there has to be some kind of an exchange. So always think about it like that, I, I guess what is what I'm saying. Um, and also just engaging all your senses, 
just like with big rituals or anything else, like engaging all your, you know, have nice incense, make it look visually appealing. Um, make sure that you maybe have some nice music if you're trying to do something that you're really engaging, that kind of stuff. Have something nice that you can eat and or drink that maybe you can share with whatever deity that you're working with, whatever spirits you're working with. So engage, engage your sixth sense, feel the presence of, you know, the beings that you're, that you've called to work with. So when you engage all your senses, you also, it's another way to really amplify and uh, all of the, your, your rituals and what you're trying to actually accomplish with your rituals. And that's, that certainly goes for any ritual, um, no matter whether it's a personal ritual or a, a bigger ritual. All right, so I guess here, I this is kind of the same kind of thing, setting the mood and ritual tools. So props, right? Candles, mood lighting, twinkle lights, flowers, statues, ritual candles. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn around this camera a little bit so you can see some of my altars and you can see all the stuff. Well, maybe I have to turn on the light. Hold on. I don't want to knock the wine over. Can you all see all my altars? Oh, sorry, my thing is all caught up. So that first one right there. Where am I got? So I got there's Diana on the bottom and there's Oshun on the top. And there's all different kinds of stuff that are specific for those um, those gods and goddesses on there. Here's my uh, business altar. And it's right above my office desk. And I've got Ganesha because he's the guy who helps you get over everything. Right. And you see, I got that pot of gold there. That's where I put money. So all these things are ways that I engage. Did I did I get rid of my um share screen share? Oh, hold on, sorry, I don't know what I did. Apologize. Uh, where are we? Is this set the mood? I think that's setting the mood. All right. Come on. Okay. It doesn't want to go back. Come on, slideshow from current slide. Anyway. So props are always important and they're also fun. Um, having a meditation area that's specifically set aside for meditation and or yoga and other kinds of moving types of meditation. Um, have on your altar, especially if you're trying to do something like self-healing or uh, cleansing and that sort of thing. Sometimes I'll take a crystal and put it on whatever excuse me, whatever altar I'm working with for this personal ritual. And I will focus my intent on that crystal that I can now carry with me. And it reminds me of the things that I'm trying to achieve and why I was doing that ritual. So anything, it could be a crystal, a rock, a shell, something. So it should be something that's not going to like, not like a feather that you can, if you stick it in your pocket, it's probably going to get all crumpled up, but something that, you know, and maybe not a boulder, but you know, like a little rock. <laughs> or something like that, a shell. But just knowing that when you stick your, like you might forget about it and then you put your hand in your pocket for something else and you feel it and it brings back that personal ritual that you were doing, right? It, it tells you, you can even do a little mojo bag. You can do all different kinds. You can do uh, jewelry. You can put jewelry on your altar and charge it for that particular purpose so that whatever, whenever you're wearing that jewelry um, from that personal ritual, it reminds you of what, why. <laughs> keeps kind of keeps you on track, keeps you focused, right? Um, make sure that the ritual content and the ritual purpose match. Um, sometimes when I was a younger ritualist, I something was cool and I was like, man, this would be so cool in this ritual, but it didn't have anything to do with the ritual purpose whatsoever. And so it ends up becoming a distraction as opposed to like a cool thing. So try to make sure that your content and what you're doing sort of matches up with uh, the purpose of your ritual. Um, as I said before, engage all your senses, you know, all six of them. This is the time to use your sixth sense, right? This is a time to actually to doing personal ritual is the perfect time to strengthen that sixth sense, right? That 
sense for magic, for wonder, for working with, you know, what maybe isn't the physical realm. So that's those personal rituals or opportunity to really build that part. Because when you do it personally, when you'd go out to do bigger rituals in public, they're also more powerful, right? If you're powerful, then what you do outside of that will also be powerful. Um, work with um, visual cues on your altar that are specific to your the meaning of your ritual. And what, what I mean by that is like, if you have a statue or a, a photograph or image of the god or goddess you're working with, it's good to have that on your altar if that's, if what, what uh, kinds of uh, powers they have is what you're trying to get for yourself. Um, and other things, anything that reminds you of the purpose of that ritual, having that visual cue can really heighten the experience. Crystals, divination tools, having a journal, especially if you make a habit a ritual out of having personal rituals, having a journal to kind of write down what you're doing. Like, especially if a ritual worked, now you know what you did. And also you can go back in the future and kind of see where you were and see where you are. And that can be a very powerful personal tool for, for healing um, and for doing like personal work. Um, I definitely highly recommend having baths and using things like bath salts or oils or other kinds of things like pe petals from um, flowers and things like that, that can make it very visually appealing and smells wonderful. And also you feel it because it's water on your skin. So you really start engaging mo more of your senses, right? S having materials to smudge with like sage, um, Palo Santo, uh, sweet grass, there's other kinds of herbs that you can also, rosemary are great. Um, having a bell or a drum or something like that to work with while you segment through your ritual, like each at each maybe pause, maybe ringing the bell to kind of tell you that you're moving to the next or a drum. Incense, candles, don't forget offerings. You don't get something for nothing. So always, if nothing else, an offering to the gods, you know, generally speaking is a never a bad thing. And that can be anything from a glass of milk, a glass of water, a glass of wine, a whiskey, flowers, food. If you know what your deity likes, give them what they like. Have music, especially meditation. There's all kinds of meditation music on the market nowadays. And there's all kinds of fantastic ways to kind of help you uh, get into the mood even more. Um, wearing ritual jewels or putting them on the altar to charge. And also I like to have an outline. Even if you don't have a script, if you have an outline that kind of keeps you focused on what you're trying to do in the ritual itself, like which, <laughs> like, like if you're doing a public ritual, you know, you'd have at the beginning, you would cleanse yourself and then you would cast the circle. And then you would, so you would have like a little outline just a little quick scribble. Once you start doing personal ones more frequently, sometimes you try to get in the habit and maybe you don't need to do that so much, but the more specific or unusual that the, the ritual is a, a for, the more likely an outline can help you focus. Also focus what you're trying to do instead of being scattered. Um, Cause sometimes when we're upset or we're trying to do something, we don't think as clearly as we would like and an outline really helps us to keep keep ourselves on track. All right, is there anybody else? I think there's one more. Nope, that was it. Is that even really? Okay, so the final, that was it really. Um, does anybody have any questions? Everybody has to unmute themselves. <laughs> No questions? I just wanted to make a, a interesting comments when you're saying that your birthday is in September, so you're close to Maybog. For me, it's uh, Samhain. Uh huh. And my birthday is in October. So that might be a special time for you because you remember have... remembering your own birth. Like we remember everybody else's birthday, but like remembering your own birth, and that's like, it's freaking magic. 
somebody's it's, sperm and somebody's egg came together and here you are. If that ain't magic, I don't know what is. That's a divine spark in, in each one totally. of us. <laughs> Just proves we're all gods, doesn't it? Well, we're, we're close to God anyways, for sure. <laughs> so does anybody do personal rituals on a regular basis? I saw Donna with us. She must do. Unmute yourself, Donna. Now, there you are. You're unmuted. Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah, I have to unmute. I'm sorry. I am now the person. I just unmuted everybody. Okay, sorry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, they're very simple these days. It's not very, not very complicated, but yeah. Did you find when you were uh, first a pagan that they were more elaborate and more? Yes, yes. Definitely. I was funny. I was in my Amazon photos this morning and you know how they show your memories. I got like this photo of 2008, like of me sitting, like my ex had taken up me sitting like in front of my altar with my little, you know, at candles and the silver and the gold and the this and the that. And I was like, oh yeah, I, re I remember that ritual. So the fact of the matter is when they get less co complicated, like you don't remember them as well. Like it's better. I, yeah, so that that actually made me think before we even were doing this because I was like, oh, I should make more of a production. Like, you know, so it's kind of a thing. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it makes it a little bit more powerful. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't need a ritual that's powerful. Sometimes you just need something in the moment that helps you move on or whatever from wherever it's, you're whenever I, you're at. I do a lot of gratitude stuff, gratitude work, because I feel like, that makes me need less things somehow. <laughs> no, I agree with you, Donna. I think it does. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What I do is I uh, have rituals at the aspects and the summits where I uh, have a particular, uh, say for new moon, I have a new moon candle I have a new moon um, incense. I have a, a new moon uh, anointing oil and I have a new moon tea. So that's what I, you know, that's for the moon. And then of course the Sabbath is the same thing. You know, I have one for each one. So do you, are those rituals personal or are they like for the espots and for the sabbaths they're, they're personal because i don't okay. go anywhere i have them at my house oh, so they're you you it's you yourself and you that's it <laughs> awesome i think I'm in, a, I, I'm in a wheelchair so i don't go anywhere it's on doctor's appointments so okay that's this is what i'm able to do well you know andrea there's a lot of solitaries out there that that's all they have as well and so probably many people, many witches and pagans are maybe more used to doing personal rituals because that's what they end up doing. Because maybe like we're very lucky here in Broward County that we have a really strong pagan community, but I'm not sure that everywhere else does, like has an actual place to gather. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like yeah, I don't know if there's anything available in Ottawa, but I wouldn't be able to go to it anyway. So this works you. like, as I say, being on Zoom is just fantastic for me. Well, you'll be able to join us in our big rituals because we do those all on Zoom too. Oh, good. <laughs> so that's uh, right. Isn't that right? I'm not talking on my butt at my bro. <laughs> I'm not sure how the internet connection is going to be at the new place for the next ritual. So it might be going from my phone, but it'll be there. So I'm, how do we get notification of it coming ahead? How did you find us for this meeting? Was it on Facebook, Meetup, something else? It's Facebook. Um, okay. It was just sort of like, you know, they, they give you a whole list of uh, Zoom meetings that are coming up and then I picked this one. Okay, so go to the event that you picked for this one, mm -hmm. and the host is actually a uh, site. So you click on that and, and follow it. 
but you can also join our group, Moonpath Cups. Um, What's up at Cups? This is the pay the, Facebook that's page. that's the private group, but but we have a public group called oh, okay. Moonpath Cups, and so a anyone can join that, and all the events will be posted there as well. You can either follow us and or join, and we'll make sure that you see all of our future events. We have the events up up there now. I'm going to be updating it for the ritual now that the venue is changing and everything else so that's going to come out this 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 week okay but i mean the links to get to these events um like some people they posted up the chat well i can't write it all out okay well um, if you save the link you used right now it's the same link at every event how do you how like i'm so not knowledgeable okay. of how technology works completely but how do you save a link um so you could you could click on the same wherever you got the link to get to get here um that's gonna when you click on that link it's gonna open up in a browser when it opens up in a browser it's probably gonna have a pop-up to say do you want to open up zoom but before you do that you can just go ahead and bookmark it in the browser. I see, okay. Or you can copy the text and keep it somewhere and paste it in there every time you want you you want to use it. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know how to cut. Or if you just go to our Facebook page, every event will have a link for you to just click. Okay. And it's uh, Moon Cups? Moon, moon Path, path. Cups. Moon yes. Path Cups. If yes. you'd like, you can message you me, Peter Brown. <laughs> Jellicoe and Eliza were both at his side when he died. Death is discriminate. Oh my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Right. Um, All right. Let's, let's so, mention that Cups is C U U P S. Yes. Yeah. Just to be positive. Okay, Andrea? You know, I think for me, if it's okay with you, then I just give you my email address. Yes. I'll I will send you all the info. Okay, okay, thanks. I'll get you a link to our Facebook group and all that. Wonderful. So, does anybody else have anything to share about maybe the personal rituals that they've done for themselves over the years? Make sure you really want what you're asking for. Yeah. <laughs> And they're done that. Got the t-shirt. <laughs> Did everybody hear that? No. What's that? She said, make sure that whatever you wish for, you really want. Okay. Because personal rituals can be quite powerful in that way. They're not diffused or diluted with other people's energies and all that kind of stuff. It's you. And if you are practicing, that's why people practice. And then suddenly you get really good at it. And maybe you be careful because maybe you don't really want that cute boy that you think you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or puppy or kitty or job mm -hmm. or you know what I'm saying? So be careful what you wish for because you might get it for sure. I actually have a daily ritual. I, um, in the evening, I have a ritual where I, I meditate and try to commune with the divine uh, reflecting on the gifts that I received the day and what, what I've done that day. And in the morning, I revisit that meditation to try to find some guidance for what I have to do in the day. So I reflect on everything that I have in my current plan for, 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 for the day and accept the changes that are gonna happen and, and just, just try to get that connection with, with my uh, high, higher power. So for me, it's, it's an evening and morning r ritual that I do almost every day. Sometimes mm -hmm. I fall asleep too, too early and then I have to do a lot in the morning. <laughs> That's really good though. I mean, it's so, I, for me, sometimes it's very hard to get into a ritual, Routine. right? Get in that habit. But um, if you can do it, mm -hmm. priceless, priceless. Priceless for your mental health and everything else. Spiritual health, physical health too. I mean, it really does help you on pretty much every level. Getting back in touch with yourself. 
and also getting in touch with the divine. Like I, I say prayers every night, and I say prayers like for myself, for other people, for what I'm grateful 